We are here at a pretty special location that has been birthed over the last two years, but it's from an organization that is also celebrating its 10 year anniversary, and that is Cornell Tech. This is an amazing campus, and we are so lucky to have them as a partner to rekindle School of Data and Open Data Week. With that, I introduce you, Michael, who is the founding director of the Urban Tech Hub here at Jacobs Institute at Cornell Tech. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. A uh, warm welcome to Cornell Tech, our incredible campus here on Roosevelt Island. I always like to take a poll, especially for a group of New Yorkers. How many folks is it your first time on Roosevelt Island? Show of hands. Wow. Well, that is one of the goals of Cornell Tech, is to help bring people to Roosevelt Island, show you this incredible space with incredible views of both Manhattan and Queens and the river. So welcome to Roosevelt Island and welcome to Cornell Tech. I'm really delighted to be hosting this. The genesis of this idea really came from an urban tech summit that we did this past November here in the space. It's you know challenging to do in-person events, and I thank you all for being here and, and wearing your masks and, and showing your vax cards. But we're very, very keen on getting people together again and really interacting and educating and sharing knowledge and ideas. Really, it's the root of open data. At the Urban Technology Hub that I run, we are a place and an outward facing think tank that thinks about the intersection of urban planning and computer science and how cities are changing due to technology in good ways and bad ways. We want to be very conscious of the role of technology when it comes to making cities. Urban Tech Hub is really just one small, small piece of a much larger initiative, which is bringing homegrown technology talent to New York City and helping to diversify our economy so we're not just so dependent on, say, the whims of Wall Street when it comes to the engines of growth in New York, but really thinking about technology as a future engine of growth and really the basis for future urban infrastructure. Here on campus, which uh, I invite you to walk around the grounds at lunchtime, we have about 500 students. We have about 100 faculty, teachers, and lecturers that visit here. We're also only about 40% built. All of those hills that you see down south here that lead to the Four Freedoms Memorial, which you should also check out at lunch if you don't mind a bit of a walk down to the tip of the island. We're only just beginning. So I'm welcome you here. I'm really thrilled that you're here. We're going to also be talking, I think in about an hour and a half about one of our keystone projects called Rebooting NYC, which is an example of the type of research that we do. We don't just do foundational research here. We do applied research. So what are the key issues of the day that the city is facing and what are some technological solutions to it? So I invite you to all stick around for that panel where we're actually going to hear not just for me, you're going to hear from some of our incredibly talented students talking about their research and ways that technology can help enable greater equity and optimization in urban systems. So with that, thank you again. And I'm going to invite Zachary from the Mayor's Open Data team to join us. Thank you so much. And good morning, everyone. It's so nice to be able to talk to people without being first told that, Zachary, you're on mute. It's just amazing. The opening for New York City Data Through Design. I don't know how many of you have been to a Data Through Design exhibition before. Some of you. So just last night was the opening of Data Through Design, which takes these open data data sets and interprets them either through visual art or through music. And it's running at the 9 Hall Street Gallery by the Brooklyn Navy Yard through the 13th. Just one of the things that we have as part of New York City Open Data Week. And if you haven't been, I would definitely recommend that you check it out before the week is over. But for those of you who don't know me, who haven't met me either over Zoom or in person, I am Zachary Fader from New York City Open Data. And what we do is we take the information that is used to run New York City government and make it available to people and make it accessible to people. And the available part, in a sense, is really straightforward because, well, we put it on a website and it's available. The accessible part, well, that's a lot harder. And the first thing that we look at is like, well, we'll improve the documentation for it. And for anyone who's interested in looking at the work that we're doing already, some of what we've done to improve documentation, so where, where we're going, we're holding a session actually this afternoon. So come and join us and hear some more about that. But something else that we've done is think about ways we can engage with members of the public. And six years ago, we started New York City Open Data Week with Beta NYC, 
And thank you, Beta, for being such great partners here over the last six years. Open Data Week consists of School of Data, this conference, and thank you all for joining today and helping to make this day such a magical opportunity for people to learn from each other, for people to, to grow. But then also, today is just the beginning of Open Data Week. There's events again through Sunday the 13th. We have more than 90 events. If you've not heard of Open Data before, there's an Open Data 101 series where we have volunteer Open Data ambassadors teaching people about how to use Open Data and the basics of it. But we also have events about visualizing data and analyzing it, different programs that you could make to, to make it easier to find. There's even an event about making slime mold inspired data visualizations. And if you're still drinking your first coffee, yes, I did just say slime mold data visualizations. So there's a pretty broad group of events during Open Data Week. I'd like to thank Anthony and Michael from Cornell Tech for hosting us today, but also having their own events throughout Open Data Week on this campus. I'd also like to thank some of the people that make New York City Open Data possible. And a lot of that is the work of city employees. So we on the Open Data team, we work with city agencies with open data coordinators at every city agency. These people take information their agency generates, identify it, document it, structure it, upload it, maintain it, and then share it. And there's also a New York City Open Data team. And I'd like to especially recognize some members of the New York City Open Data team and Open Office of Data Analytics who are here today. There's Alex Finkel in the back. You'll probably see him around at different sessions today. He's one of the people who helps to publish all of this data. And then Mal Gosha, Raniak, and Kari Bailey in the front, who you already met before, help to organize Open Data Week and work with me every day. And Oliver Bjornsson also helped to organize Open Data Week. Thank you all for the work that you do. Thanks to all the city staff for the work that they do. And today is also, not only is it International Open Data Day, but it is almost the anniversary of the passage of the New York City Open Data Law. So on Monday, it will be 10 years. It's a bit of a birthday party for New York City Open Data. Since that law was passed, I know Gail Brewer will be speaking in just a few minutes about her work there and making that possible. And it's a result of many people who had advocated for that over years, something where additional laws have passed, it's continued to grow and improve. But really, this is about taking the information, again, that's used to make government work and making it accessible to people because it really is, it's your information. It's information about your parks, your schools, your streets, your communities, and everyone should be able to, to see this information and have better access to it. And Open Data Week is really just an attempt to make that vision of people using this information more possible. So thank you all for attending School of Data and thank you for helping to make Open Data Week what it is. If you want to learn more about Open Data Week, open-data.nyc. You can see all events there. You can sign up. With that, I will turn it back over to Noel. Excellent. Thank you, Zachary. With that, I get to introduce you to someone that I first introduced two years ago. Back then, Gabby was a CUNY fellow. And since then, we have had, a, with the generous support of our dear council members, some of them who are in the room, and Borough President Gail Brewer then, and now with the support of Mark, we have been able to hire her. And so now Gabby is a full-time, well, part-time Beta NYC staff member who's still going to school, but she's now leveled up to being an apprentice with us. And so this is a great honor to bring uh, one of our two apprentices that are here on staff today to take you through the next steps. All righty. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Morning. Thank you so much for being here today. So first and foremost, I just want to thank everyone in this room today. These past two years have been turbulent to say the least, but it's your presence, your energy, your participation at these events, which drives us every day. So from the bottom of our hearts, thank you for your love and for being part of this wonderful community. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Round of applause. Absolutely. Thank you. Can't skip the volunteers now. I have the pleasure this year of managing our wonderful volunteers without whom this conference would not be possible. You'll find them throughout the day today wearing this, but in yellow. So stop by, chat to them, say hi. Um, they are wonderful people with such enthusiasm for all things civic tech. So I just wanted to thank our volunteers for being here. We can give them a round of applause. They're awesome. As Noel just mentioned, 
We have the Civic Innovation Fellowship Program, which is part of CUNY Service Corps. This program is the pillar of all things Beta NYC. And this year we are so proud to mark eight years of a Civic Innovation Fellowship. It's definitely a, a true milestone. And, and so each year, Beta NYC trains a new cohort and teaches people like me about civic data, design and technology practices. And then we're deployed to help the city perform vital research and analytics. And furthermore, our fellows also have helped to plan School of Data and Open Data Week. So as mentioned, we have this milestone event today, but I do want to give a shout out for another initiative that Beta NYC has ongoing. So it is called the New York City People's Tech Assemblies. In essence, we want to gather your thoughts on all things New York City tech and encourage you to log on to peoplestech.nyc to share your ideas. Our engagement period ends on March 13th. We'll also have a living wall toolkit, which will allow you to share your ideas in person via sticky post-it notes to be set up at lunchtime today. So that will be up on the second floor. Stop by, share your ideas. They will feed into something called the People's Roadmap, which Noel will talk about a little later. So on that note, it is my pleasure to introduce our keynote speakers for today. First up, we have Comptroller Lander. Now, Comptroller Lander is a very data-driven, and he's passionate about using data to hold the city accountable. We are so excited to have his participation in Open Data Week for the next four years. This week, he will be hosting classes throughout the week on the Checkbook 2.0. So without further ado, please welcome Comptroller Brad Blander. Thank you so much, Gabby. Now, normally in these things, you do it by like, you know, citywide and then borough wide and then council members. But I, I got to say in this room, the royalty of open data is here. And we, I would like to propose reversing the order here and letting Gail Brewer, the sponsor of the open data law, speak first and go like an order of strength of commitment to open data, which I love and feel proud of. But Gail, come on, come on, you gotta. All right, all right. I'm paying credit where it's due. So let's give a big hand to the lead sponsor of the open data law and somebody whose leadership on these issues has really been unparalleled. This is an amazing community that you have built and made more diverse and energetic but long before I think there was this breadth of understanding, long before there was this campus, long before there was a shared understanding of what difference open data makes in making our city run better and making it more open and involving more people, Gail really led the way. So I just want to say thank you again. Great to be here also with our Manhattan Borough President, Mark Levine. We're in Manhattan, even if it's wonderful to be on Roosevelt Island. Uh, I'm New York City Controller Brad Lander. I've been to many of these before, and I'm so delighted to be back to Noel and Gabby and the whole Beta NYC team. Thank you. I just especially want to appreciate, you know, there's a lot of co-sponsors, but Beta NYC has worked so hard to build the diversity and grassroots strength of the open data movement, recognizing that there's a power in data to be radically democratic, to bring more people in, to open up our city. But that takes work. It doesn't happen by itself. Just because the data sets go on the web, it takes building that community of people. And that's how it can deliver for New York City. I also got to say, I also love the vest. Like there's something about having like your 1978 safety patrol meet 2022 open data where the volunteers are in yellow and the apprentices are in orange. And it's like an excellent color coded system for helping us interpret the data around us. Thank you also NYC Open Data and the new New York City Office of Technology and Innovation to the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics, to the folks here at Cornell Tech for welcome us all this morning. Um, in the New York City Controller's Office, every week is Open Data Week. We work really hard to make sure that folks have access to all kinds of data coming through New York City. And one of the things that we're proudest of and that we're leaning into this week is the function called Checkbook NYC, which you can go check out at checkbooknyc.com. And this week, we fulfilled a commitment we made to get done in the first 100 days, putting a tracker up for the all the many billions of New York City stimulus funds that we're getting from the federal government which we launched this week at checkbooknyc.com slash stimulus, um, or you can get there from the controller's website. You can sort of see in some visualizations, but you can also download in full basically every check that the city has written 
through web stimulus funds in the categories and codes that OMB have provided. And then you can see our analysis of why those codes really need a lot of work and aren't all that helpful. And we should do a lot better in the ways that we're interpreting and coding them. And I really feel like that is the spirit of this community is provide all the data you get, say what you can about it and push harder to do better so that we can make sure we open it up next time. We will be as part of our Open Data Week commitment offering two trainings, like a 101 on Checkbook NYC for first time users and also like a power user Checkbook NYC because it has a ton of functionality. And so if you already use it, check that out. It's part of the Open Data Week offering. We're also really looking forward to pushing forward together with you. You know, my job, part of it is as chief accountability officer to make sure our agencies and City Hall are using the information we have to help city government do as well as it possibly can. But boy, accountability in a democracy, in a city as diverse as this, it can't be like the controllers, like the Wizard of Oz behind some curtain, like wagging a finger. It has to be a shared task. And so what we aim to do is a much more participatory approach to that job of asking New Yorkers what they think about how things are working. We modeled that with a survey we did with CUNY in the late stages of the campaign, which you can also get on our website about what New Yorkers think about how agencies are performing. But we also know we could do so much more powerful accountability if we open up the questions we're looking at, the data sets we're investigating. No way the people in our office, as good as they are, can take so much of that data that's out there about how our agencies are working and how they're not working, where they're falling short in meeting our goals for equity and inclusion, where they're falling short of the targets we need to confront the climate crisis, where there's waste and fraud, and where the city could perform better on all our key goals. So we invite you to be partners in that process. If you want to see a little more about what I committed in the campaign, you can still find that at landerfornyc.com where we speak about what it looks like to imagine technology for an inclusive city. That's got a whole bunch of elements, including making sure we get broadband to people that they can afford, making sure that we're thinking about the pipeline of jobs into the sector, which it's so great to be at Cornell Tech and be with a lot of you. And then especially in that chief accountability officer job to make sure we are working with you through people's tech, through open data, through uh, challenges that we'll do together. So bring us ideas if you have thoughts on how we could be using the data the city has to focus on particular agencies. This week, I've been talking a lot about sanitation because, boy, every neighborhood I go to in the city, people are like, Brad, have you seen how dirty the streets are? And if you say, well, how do we evaluate that? I can tell you that the sanitation department has a thing called a scorecard. But if you ask me how the scorecard gets put together, you would probably say, well, is the city taking all that 311 data of all the people that are reporting? And I would have to tell you, sadly, no. Scorecard involves a handful of sanitation employees driving around the city in vehicles and marking down on pieces of paper. Maybe they're not on pieces of paper. I honestly don't know. It's possible they have an app and filing. And I mean, all oh, bless the Department of Sanitation employees. I don't mean you know, like they're doing their jobs, but we are not doing ours of using the wealth of data that we have. That is New Yorkers lived experience that is reported in all kinds of ways that reflects deep equity concerns, black and Latino New Yorkers are twice as likely as white New Yorkers to prioritize that the cleanliness of their neighborhood would make them feel its quality of life was being addressed. So when I was out in Southeast Queens in Community Board 12, people are saying, yes, you wanna talk about equity issues? Talk about why our neighborhood doesn't get the cleanliness that other neighborhoods do and that we deserve. But you can't see any of that right now in the ways that the city does an evaluation of a relatively simple thing where we have a ton of data. So please help us, give us ideas. We're gonna be asking you for partnership. We are really excited to be partnering in Open Data Week. And like I say, in our office, every day is Open Data Week. So all of you are always welcome. Thank you so much. Have a great Open Data Week. Excited to be working with you. Okay, thank you so much, Comptroller Brander. Let's give him another round of applause, everyone. <laughs> okay, so it is my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, who is Manhattan Borough President Mark Levine. And if you follow him on Twitter, as I do, you know that he has been diligent and compassionate when providing us with COVID stats, updated mask regulations, and so much more, no matter how painful they may be. He has brought me a peace of mind. And for that, I am most grateful throughout this pandemic. I thank you. And so on that note, please welcome Manhattan Borough President, Mark Levine. 
That was beautiful, Gabby. Can we give Gabby Langston a big round of applause? We love having you in the Manhattan Borough President's Office. Good morning, civic hacktivists. Great to see all of you. Welcome to the Borough of Manhattan. Thank you, Comptroller Lander, for clarifying that. Yes, we are in Manhattan, right, Gail? I am thrilled to be hosted here at Cornell Tech for so long. If you wanted a career in technology in New York City, you had to go somewhere else for grad school. And now you have a world-class opportunity right here in New York City, and it's going to change everything. An applause for our host. Thank you, Cornell Tech. I am in awe of what this movement has done over the past decade, and I have no greater gratitude than what I feel for my amazing predecessor, who Noel Hidalgo likes to call the fairy godmother of open data, Gail Brewer. Thank you. Gail, please, applause. Some of you might, might not realize that really the inflection point in this movement was the moment that she passed the law 10 years ago that forced the city to crack open data that it was not revealing to the public. That made all of your work possible and what you have achieved over the past decade really started with that moment. So happy birthday, happy 10th, and thank you so much, Gail. Thank you, Beta NYC. Noel Hidalgo, oh my gosh. We're going to nominate you for the MacArthur Genius Award. You can applaud for the MacArthur Genius Award and for Noel Hidalgo. We're really honored to have Beta housed in the Manhattan Borough President's Office, and we are already doing great things with them. We've been in a, a big push to get the MTA to install screen doors on subway platforms uh, because it'll make our system so much safer. And they've been resisting. And thanks to our pressure, they dumped, uh, I think it was a 4,000 page PDF or something like that, which had all the data evaluating the feasibility of this technology through the 472 stations. And I think they hoped that by kind of obscuring it in a very difficult to pick apart PDF, that would be the end of the story but they don't know beta NYC. So they set to work, they scraped all the data out of that and produced a really easy to understand map that identified over a hundred stations around the city where even by the MTA's own reckoning, this technology is feasible. And I don't think it's a coincidence that within a week of that, the MTA announced a pilot to do this at three stations. This is huge. And I think that data played a big role in shifting the public conversation on that. When people could see that there are stops in their neighborhood where the MTA has already concluded this is feasible, they're not gonna take no for an answer. This is one example of the power of the kind of work you're doing to bring data together and make it compelling and useful for the public. We're also working with Beta on behalf of community boards, which I think all of you know are really hyper-local form of government in New York City. And they deal with a flood of incoming data, but have huge challenges in making it work for their communities. Beta talks about the idea of data literacy, a skill set that you must continue to hone because the world of data is always changing. And we're really trying to offer a continuous learning system for community board staff and members so that they can use the reams of data now being generated on behalf of their communities. Just one more way that, that Beta is enhancing our work in Manhattan. For all that we've accomplished, really that you've accomplished, I firmly believe that there is almost no system in New York City, no system of urban life here that, that couldn't and shouldn't be improved by better use of data. Transportation, obviously, sanitation, as Brad mentioned, public health, for sure, human rights, housing, all of it needs data, needs data that is transparent and put together in compelling ways. As Gabby mentioned, I think a lot about that in the context of health. Uh, I don't think there's any field where we see the devastating consequences when the public is overwhelmed with misinformation. And the clear data that you all are producing has the power to overcome that. And we still need that now for what's ahead for this pandemic and the next public health crisis. So all of you who have chosen this career, thank you, thank you, thank you. We need you now more than ever. I'm looking forward to another great decade of impact and innovation with data in New York City. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. And now you're going to hear from the godmother, right? You can start walking up, Gail. Thank you so much. Okay. And on a quick note um, from the Beta NYC staff, I just wanted to give a special shout out to Z, who is our lab manager and 
Onej, who is a fellow apprentice with me. Um, they were the brains and the wizards behind scraping that MTA data that the borough president just mentioned. And so I shout out to you, Zane Onej. You guys are rock stars. Give them a round of applause. They're amazing. <laughs> Where do I even begin with our next speaker? You have made everything possible, Council Member Brewer. You have been mentioned as the fairy godmother of open data. I would like to add also the fairy godmother of civic tech. If it wasn't for Council Member Brewer and her expertise pushing for data and technology driven systems, we wouldn't have the open data law. In short, why is women in government get the job done? You know, they really do. Our community would not exist without you, council member, along with your peers who have fought and continue to fight for open data and good government. So on that note, it is my pleasure to introduce council member Gil Brewer. Thank you very much, Gabby. This is really an honor to be here today. I want to thank you, Brad Lander. I want to tell you a funny story about Checkbook. When it first started, the gentleman who did it put it up and one of the first aspects of where the checks had gone was to a purchase by Mayor Bloomberg for wine, which is illegal. You cannot use city money to purchase liquor. So that was fun, made the front page of the New York Post. So I really love when sunshine and transparency are the result of good data. So that was my favorite checkbook story. And I'm sure that when you regard them, you'll find other stuff. Thank you, Noel. Thank you. Just so you know, Z was my student at Hunter College, and that's how we ended up here. So, Z, thank you very much. You are a star student, and you're a star data analyst. So, thank you so much, Z. That's really a big deal that you're here today. I also just want to also certainly want to thank Cornell Tech. I have been here before when it was just an idea, and now that it is a wonderful space, not only is it a great place for graduate students, but they also host some young people who work on robotics. And it's a place where high school students can learn robotics. So it's a place that has many, many aspects to it. And it's a great location. I want to just tell you two seconds about how this bill started, because it is a wonderful story. I was always interested in data, but the person, and I know she's not here, her name is Beth Novick. She's at New York University. She does the tech hub there. And she was the CTO for Bill Clinton. Very unusual to have women, very unusual to have a CTO at that time. And what she taught me in building and passing this legislation was something really important. She said, Gail, your constituents, not the public, your constituents are the city workers, the people who put the data in. And I've never forgotten that. And I do want to thank city workers because they're the ones along with people who keep them honest and who, from the public, make suggestions as a suggestion box, so to speak. But it's a, a good lesson for all of us. When we're designing something, make sure that the city can implement it and that it has buy-in from the agencies. And then I spent many years meeting with agency staff who do data. And it's a good lesson because it's hard, it's particularly building it from the very beginning. So that's an important aspect of what we do. I just want to mention a couple of places where I think hopefully in the last 10 years, it's been helpful. Certainly the fact that Data NYC has spent all that time with the community boards. I really appreciate the borough president, Mark Levine, continuing that because the community boards are our eyes and ears. It's not easy. My dream, of course, and I think borough president staff and borough president share it, is that you go to a meeting like this and up on the board is a huge screen with the data as we're planning what sanitation issues are in the neighborhood and we can overlay them with all the other health department and pest control, the rat people, and the baskets that are mesh and not silver lining, et cetera, et cetera. But we don't, we're not there yet. And that's the goal of this data effort, in my opinion. In terms of housing, there's a group called Just Fix NYC, and I think you know it. It's a wonderful group that uses data to identify root causes of displacement, creates data-driven tools to assist tenants stay where they are. And of course, mapping is part of this. Where are the worst evictors? Where is displacement? What are the resources? And they are part of a group that came out of ANHD, Association of Neighborhood Housing Developers, first went to the court, and this is all with Beta NYC's effort, all, all, all 
going to the court, getting the, from housing court, getting the evictions. And then I worked with them for, took two years, just to give you an idea. Data doesn't come easy. It doesn't happen overnight. We finally convinced the court system to tell us, not just, God help us, somebody's about to be evicted. That's horrible for those of you who work with tenants. But could you please tell us, as the eviction is filed before, so we have some way of knowing where we can send in organizers, where we can send in tenant uh, assistance. And Mark Levine was helpful in doing that when he was in the city council to pass a bill that says every tenant, certain income deserves a lawyer. But if you don't know that you're about to be evicted and you don't pay attention, then you can lose out on getting your apartment kept. So this data finally got the court to agree to do that. Like I said, it took two years, an awful lot of meetings that I went to. The problem, just to give an example, you have all this data and it's on the web. Problem is it's hard to put that data together with, okay, in Flatbush, on the Upper West Side in Harlem, we have a community group that can go tomorrow to make sure that this problem is solved. Those are the ways in which we still need to work together to use the data. And it's still the data has a lot of challenges too. But it's an example of housing evictions tracker being used in a way that is supportive. So it's just something we have to keep in mind because it, as I deal with, the, as we all do, the end of the moratorium, we want to make sure nobody gets evicted. Another example is risk-based inspection system at the fire department because the fire department draws data from a variety of sources, as you can imagine, to identify the buildings that pose the greatest fire risk, empowers our first responders to be prepared. And I know that there have been some challenges, but let me give you an example of one. Oh, my goodness. During the Bloomberg administration, a huge, very expensive Roman uh, system was put up for all first responders. I think it's in the toilet. I don't even know that it exists. This was a situation in which we were going to have our water, the Port Authority was going to be involved, all first responders, et cetera. So sometimes when we build these big systems, we have to take a lot of time to make sure that they really work. Um, this was an example. Now there's new systems perhaps working better. Those of you in the room who are working on them know better than I do. But I was there when Grumman was put in. We signed off on a major purchase and it hasn't been effective. And perhaps nothing's more important than when the fire department is going into a building to make sure that it is the data that they really need. So it's an example of making sure the data is correct. I also want to just talk about the city council. We have a wonderful data team, data analytics. Most recently, they've been helping me with shoplifting. We all know that there's a lot of shoplifting going on. And so I wanted to know where are the shoplifters doing their most busy activity? And it turns out, as we are looking not finalized, and we've been working with the Manhattan District Attorney, who, as you know, has been meeting with a lot of the business people. I think what's happening, and I want to thank Eddie, who is here from our office, because we were also looking at it, that the shoplifters are most busy on the Upper West Side and the Upper East Side, more so perhaps than in other neighborhoods. And then when you have that kind of data, you can say to the local police department, this is what we need, or to the local Dwayne Reed, or to the grocery stores, let's work on this together. But when you have that data, because normally we hear, oh, it's terrible, shoplifting everywhere. And that's maybe true, but if you can pinpoint it with this kind of data, it makes a huge difference. And what's funny about the 311, you have to make sure that you have petite larceny, and then in parentheses, shoplifting, because there's about a million other kinds of theft. I've learned that recently. I also just want to say that the city council has worked with parents, school explorer, to figure out all the information that the public schools have and that they can then help in terms of parent input. I find the DOB website challenging. I don't know about you in terms of data. So anything we can do to make sure that it is explained is a good thing. Same thing with the paid equity law. It was a law of local law 18. I'm sure Mark Lee knows it. And the idea is to make sure that we have detailed information about the city's workforce, pay equity. I think it was Helen Rosenthal that passed that bill, or maybe it was just James, but the pop, the, we have equal pay day on March 15th. And you can see the gap between men and women in terms of pay. Another example. So I'm here to say these are some examples. The only one I want to mention finally is dark stores. You know, I am focused on these friggin' stores. I don't know if you've seen them. They are 
large. They have warehouse-like items in them. You can't usually go in, although sometimes they're figuring out if I go in, then I'll be in accordance with the zoning. Hell no, you're not in accordance with the zoning. You don't have labels on your products. You don't have a scale. You don't have cash. And sometimes the windows are covered. So then we want to know, where are these things? Thank you, Beta NYC. Thank you, Z. So what we found, uh, no surprise, perhaps, is that last October, there were 20 of them in Manhattan. And now there are 48 in Manhattan. And there are 115 in the city of New York. That's a pretty big jump. So with that data, I know the city of New York is here. It's not necessarily your agencies. And you have no idea what to do. I got it. But you, this data could help you to say, which one of these buildings is in conformance with the zoning and which are not? You just layer that. So I'm looking forward to hearing from city planning and DOB, but it's only the data and it's only the map and it's only the great work the Beta NYC has done that shows this is where the problem is. And it really is, the data is the transparency. And that's what's so exciting about the work today. So congratulations. I look forward to hearing much more from you. and I. I want to also just give a shout out to Silicon Harlem um, as another example of an organization that is constantly figuring out how to use this data in Harlem. Thank you very much. Look forward to hearing from you. Thank you, Gail.